Um, sorry for the slight delay in starting, so welcome to this special um, meeting of the cabinet. Um, so uh, let's go straight into the agenda. I think, first of all, uh, I need to formally uh, ask for Council George Davis's apologies to be given. George is on holiday at the moment, so we can record for that. I'm grateful. Um, item one is members' COVID conduct declarations of interest. Um, I think, just check with you, Sergey. I think we're going to have um, additional item item six on the business improvement district report. So obviously, as the director of the Chamber of Commerce, I will be declaring an interest and leaving the room. Um, Stuart, I think you you have an interest in that item as well. So those, those two interests, any, any other cabinet members wish to declare any, any interests? No? Okay. Um, minutes of the previous meeting, can we agree that our sign was a true record? Is that agreed? Item number three, Holly Lake Golf Resort. I'll hand over to Pat to take us through this, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, this is a report, as we can see, uh, for quite some members to know the significant progress made with regard to taking forward the Holly Lake Golf Resort project and following a bid program, uh, a follow -up, uh, a following a bid progress to authorise the announcement of the Nicholas Joint Venture Group at NJ. <coughs> As the Council prepared the development department. Um, on the first page, uh, I was going to say that the yeah, outset the Council made it clear that all bids will be evaluated against four main criteria um, and will weight it accordingly. That, that is meeting the Council's vision 20%, deliverability 35%, commercial viability 30%, and commercial terms 15%. Subject to members' approval to this report and the signing of the uh, project development agreement, the Council can proceed to close dialogue and come out of the formal uh, procurement uh, phase. <coughs> Developing, of course, a world class international golf resort at Hoy Lake has been a long term aspiration of the Council. Hoy Lake is a special place in the history of golf, particularly the Lynx style of golf. And I am at Hoy Lake, is known, of course, worldwide. Over a long history, the course has hosted many prestigious international tournaments, including the Open Championships uh, on numerous occasions, and most recently, of course, in 2014. The benefits to the world, uh, Chair, as a world class golf resource, are many, particularly viewed in the wider context of England's Gold Coast, which links Royal Liverpool, Royal Birkdale, and Royal Liverpool. It's an attractive, highly marketable uh, offer for international and UK based. Visitors. The addition of a new Nicholas uh, signature golf course, hotel, and the Lynx Course Academy lifts, of course, the existing offer onto a significantly more attractive uh, level. England's Gold Coast currently lacks a quality hotel on site, uh, and the clustering of venues in close proximity together with the Lynx Academy will be unique in England. The involvement of the international trading names on the golf and hotel boards, of course, will also have an immediate uh, impact, creating interest and demand in the area and recapture some of that activity currently displayed to Liverpool and beyond. Uh, based on live data sourced from a similar operational golf resource in the South Wales, it has been calculated that the Hoy Lake Golf Resource uh, could create a total of 175 jobs, uh, direct jobs. The operation, was up and, uh, once the operation was, was up and running. The Nicholas bid also estimates that the construction of the championship uh, golf course, hotel, clubhouse, and the infrastructure would create a total of 168 uh, construction jobs. The indirect benefits of the project are more difficult to state at this stage, but the increase in tourism numbers will be significant. 
decision chair paves the way for a period of extensive public consultation to commence uh, shortly. The appendix to this report sets out further financial details and is exempt from the Schedule 12A of the Local Government Act 1972, due to the commercial sensitivity. Uh, the recommendations, as you can see at the end of the report, Chair, and I hope members can agree, are to appoint the Nicholas Joint Venture Group as the Council's preferred development partner, and upon serving the necessary notices and standstill period before we close the competitive dialogue process. Members agree, secondly, to the principles set out for the report and approve further discussions as detailed in the exempt appendix. Can I just say as well, off the record, well, from, from, from my point of view, it's, it's, it's been going this since 2004, uh, and it's always, as, as we mentioned in the report, been an aspiration of the council for a long, long time. And it's one of those big ticket projects that can make a big, big difference, I think, to the world. And, and it's one of the things also that we need to keep pursuing and make happen to add to the significant projects that we have developed across the world. It's a great vision and a great project. Actually, but, but, but lastly, sorry, Tommy, can you read those? Yeah, okay, thanks, Pat. And just to, to add a um, few, few words from me, I mean, I, obviously, you know, I think it's great news that we've got somebody uh, of Jack Nicholas's kind of stature backing this development. I think that will, as you say, Pat, help to put Hoy Lake and Wirral on the, on the map uh, even more than, than we already are, and, and will really enhance the kind of tourism mm -hmm. offer. Um, and, and it will directly contribute to the um, pledges in our plan uh, around improving the visitor economy uh, and creating jobs and, and investment. So uh, I think it'll be a great contribution to that. Um, and, you know, I think the idea of having um, you know uh, a Jeff Nicholas signature of golf course and um, the re related facilities, particularly the, the Lynx Academy, which I think will be unique in, in certainly in England. Um, will, will be a tremendous boom for the area. And, you know, I, I, I know from looking at the, the stats that golf tourism now is an absolutely massive market and I think it will enable us to really um, capture that for the benefit of not just we're all, all of the Liverpool City region. So um, I think it's good news from all those points of view. I think we have to um, uh, just uh, add that obviously um, the, the next stage, as you say, is the, the informal consultation, but this clearly will need to go through all the proper planning processes. Um, I think we just need to um, uh, kind of uh, recognise that. But I think in terms of our, our, our ambition uh, to be a, um, a borough with a, a, a tourism offer which is second to none, I think this is going to be a fantastic um, uh, contribution. And I, I, I think it's, it's a great report. And, um, as I say, formally, all we're being asked to do today is agree that the Nicholas Joint Venture Group be the uh, preferred development partner. So that's the formal decision today. But I think, yeah, in terms of the vision, I, I think it's really exciting. Tony? Yeah, it's just very quickly, Chair. I was glad to see that the Nibida has the experience of um, sort of supporting local schools, you know, particularly um, year nine pupils and six form pupils. And this will give them a good opportunity, you know, to get work experience and that. In the, in, the, in the sort of leisure and hotel industry and that. And I think it's also a good opportunity, it would be a good opportunity for apprenticeships as well. Sure. So, you know, that, that's good news for, for, for young people as well. So. Splendid. Okay, so, unless there are any other questions and comments, uh, can we agree those recommendations? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Which takes us then to the uh, two highways and transport matters. Uh, first of all, item four which is Sustainable Transport Enhancement Package. Uh, Stuart, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, from Wembley Authority has awarded £1.7 million of Sustainable Transport Enhancement Programme funding for the United States Weather and Step. It is going to for 32 years of the Field Programme, mm -hmm. which is covers 2015-16 and 16-17. The allocation, which is part of a city region wide allocation of £13.8 million, is to deliver identified schemes in two of the city regions identified for the areas. The rural schemes is support group zones 2 and 5, the Mersey Waterfronts and the A41 Corridor, respectively, with the aim of the schemes being to improve transport links, remove transport barriers, and broaden tra travel choices to support regeneration and investment, as 
well as providing sustainable access to employment opportunities and supporting the business economy. Appendix 1 sets out the detailed step programs we've delivered by the Council, which includes pedestrian and cycle infrastructure improvements in the of waters and we're all international business park areas, public realm and accessible seat improvements to around Thompson Square area and uh, pedestrian by cycle bridge across the building. In addition to these schemes, Mason Travel has also secured us funding secure funding that will benefit rural West residents with improvements to Benson and Benson and Green Lane stations and improvements to Bayfair North to provide additional car park provision. The Combined North Forest will be developing the programs of three years, three to six of the Griffith Day program going to the month, which will be reported to Cabinet in due course. Uh, Cabinet will be requested to approve acceptance uh, for £1.7 million of step funding. On the step program as outlined in Appendix 1, and to delegate the authority to the head of the balance and regulation in conjunction with the cabinet member and party spokesperson to make any adjustments to the programs when these arise. Thank you, okay, thanks, Stuart. Um, unless there are any questions, can we agree those recommendations? They agree? Okay, thank you. Okay, that then takes us to item 5, the transport plan for growth program 2015-16. Stuart again. Thank you, Chair. The Combined Authority has awarded £1.05 million pounds of integrated transport block funding to World Council to support the delivery of the local city region transport plan for growth. The transport plan for growth is the key policy framework for future transport provision because of the latest Missy Sarah Hopton's local transport plans to provide a strategic direction of transport, identifying growth, access to opportunity in low carbon and main priority, as well as supporting wider priorities in terms of health, housing, and land use and <coughs> developments. Each local city region district has developed a capital program which when combined form a city region wide implementation plan. When all the transport plan for growth program has been on basis of effective priorities of the transport plan for growth as well as supports the council's corporate goals and objectives to ensure that the roads are safe and maintained and to reduce the number of people killed or seriously injured on the road. Appendix 1 of the report sets out the detailed program based around the things of growth, enabling access to opportunity, support of local development environments and development where well, access to support advanced design future schemes. I can also um, like to point out that there's a number of thousand pounds that's been involved in uh, the most opportunities for the spend on road safety schemes. <coughs> in addition to the individual districts and allocations, there's also a city region wide allocations to support cross or policy activities such as traffic model maintenance and development. Monitoring and busy side atmospheric conditions in the Cabinet has been requested to approve an acceptance of 1.085 million and the transport plan for growth funding program as outlined in Appendix 1 and delegate the authority to the head of the balance of regulation in conjunction with cabinet member and party spokespersons to make any adjustments to the program should be needed arise. Okay, thanks, Stuart. I think we just need to correct a, a, a typo in 4.1.4. It's £25,000 per constituency committee, not £20,000. It's correcting the table, but it, it, it's, it's incorrect in that um, in that paragraph. It's 25000 Okay, so thanks, Stuart, for taking us through those um, uh, issues. Any any questions, comments? No? Can we can we agree those recommendations? They agree. Thank you. Okay, uh, we're now going to go on to the bid report and I'm going to vacate the chair and hand over to, to Anne. Okay, thank you.
combined appraisable value of 30.8 million. 19 of these assets are in council ownership. Uh, this entitles the council to 19 votes in the event of a bid, ballot, and the identification of a representative to vote yes on behalf. Uh, assuming, assuming a successful uh, ballot, and depending on the level, the bid board choose to impose on businesses. This will leave the policy uh, allowed to further uh, it is, it is a 1% levy, 16,484, and it's a 2% levy, 32,964 uh, per annum in business rates for five years. In order to assist with their cash flow, the bid company have requested that the council release 98% of the levy at the beginning of April. Uh, as this in turn impacts on the authority's own cash flow and moreover its ability to collect all the levies in. It is recommended that for year one we pay over 95% of the front. The percentage rate for any upfront payments in future years will be reviewed depending on the council's collection rate. As the council doesn't have the capacity chair uh, currently to collect in and chase up the 653 additional levies, it will necessitate, necessitate the need to recruit a new uh, member of staff to the business rates team. Uh, to offset this, it, this cost, it recommended the council charge the big company a fee of, six, of £35 per asset uh, in year one to cover as I said, the council's cost of, of, the, of, of administering and enforcing the bid levy and then reduce this charge for future years when Full years operation has taken place. While well, some councils, approximately a third, chair, don't levy, don't sorry, levy a levy collection charge, the request from the bid company, nonetheless, the follow suit, isn't economically viable given the savings the council, uh, the council will continue to have to make over the next few years. Finally, the bid company would prefer to send the bid levy demand out separately to the normal business rate bills. As this ensures the business recognises the level of additional services the bid will deliver over and above that which is funded by the council. This will incur additional cost to the council of £1,500 per annum to cover the cost of stationing and postage. In view of the council's current financial situation and position, the recommendation is to pass these costs on to the bid company. And if I may share, um, can I ask? As I said at the outset, you will see all the um, recommendations at the end of the report. Um, you want me to, Jay? Okay, what would you like to do? I think it would be helpful given that we've got a revised recommendation yeah. that everybody understands exactly what we're okay. being asked to agree. And the recommendations at the end of the report, which are <coughs> actually to, to identify the person who will exercise the cabinet's council vote, sorry, in, in the forthcoming ballot. In the case of a positive ballot, to raise a bid that A, a year one, 95% of the bid levy is paid on the 1st of April, with the percentage being reviewed for future years, depends on the council's performance in collecting the levy. B, the council charges the bid company a levy collection charge of 30 Pound per unit to cover its costs and employ a member of staff to collect and enforce. Mm -hmm. No, it's the same. Is this the one in the. Council charge the big company a levy collection charge, as I said earlier, of £35 pound per unit in year one. Yeah. Yeah. Cover the council's cost of administering and enforcing the bid levy, and then we use this charge for future years, or full years operation has taken place. Yeah. C. The council agreed to fund the bid levy, the bid levy, in respect of its assets uh, in the bid area for a period of five years, as set out in paragraph 4.1 of the report. Finally, D, the council charges the bid company the extra cost of separate billing should the bid company require this. And the reason for the recommendation is to enable the proposal, obviously, which is quite obvious, to establish a business improvement district in Birkenhead Town Centre 
to continue progress and for regeneration efforts. Okay, I think it's helpful to so, clarify that so we can understand that absolutely. the levy is levy will be chargeable in the first instance for the first year and then subject to discussion and review. So we can understand that. Can I just say on the first part of the recommendation, uh, Pat, you mentioned about identifying the person who exercised the council's vote. Um, that I would recommend to Cabinet that is taken for regeneration in consultation with myself. Yeah, Acts as that person. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so subject to that, can our colleagues agree the recommendation? Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, I think that concludes the public part <coughs> of the meeting. Um, I've not been advised by any other urgent business. I now need to move the um, exemption to exclude the press and the public, and this item is exempt as it contains commercially sensitive information. So, can I um, see a seconder for that? Is that agreed, Can I ask the present public to leave, please? Thank you for your attendance.